Today, I am using Google to help me build my next gaming setup. The catch, I am doing this entirely blindly. I'm gonna put some search results in and buy whatever it spits out. Why is one of the trending searches nose picking? <laughs> Apparently, Alzheimer's is caused by nose picking? Google, how you're blowing my mind right now. Ah, no, no, stop. Stop it. I'm gonna go shopping tab. What do we have for Austin Evans shopping? Austin Evans guitar tabs. What the hell is this? Someone took one of my thumbnails and turned it into guitar tabs? Oh, I, I, oh this guy kind of cool. You can go on drop.com and get my keycap. Look at that, the Austin Evans keycap, available for $5. I did this for a charity thing quite a while ago and apparently drops still have some. So you can get yourself some artisanal Austin Evans keycaps for five bucks. Gaming keyboard. So why is it that when I type in gaming keyboard, I'm getting these weird like um, one-handed little like wow pads. A Cooler Master sneaker gaming PC for $3,400? What the hell? Microphone for gaming? A Merzerdy. Oh God, that is so bad. Oh, look, it's like fake RGB. It's like, oh, it's like a Dragon Claw for $20. This thing is gonna sound terrible. Budget gaming monitor. A cooey? A cooey? That's 100 hertz. I heard that anything above 60 is great. Uh, for $70? I think that sounds like exactly the monitor I need. Cheap gaming console. Uh, oh, it's DK Oldies! It's DK Oldies all the way down! No! No! <laughs> $120 for a Game Boy. We got a lot of stuff for our gaming setup right now. I think it's time to place a large number of orders and build the Google approved gaming setup. And we're gonna find out if you just trust the big G, what you get. There are a few pieces of tech that are indispensable once you get used to them, and an electric toothbrush is absolutely one of them. So when Life & reached out to sponsor this video, I was very excited because the Life & Wave is no joke, the best electric toothbrush I've ever used. That might not sound all that impressive, but once you go and experience what the Wave can do, you will legitimately be impressed. I am sure of it. I picked this thing up, and first of all, the unboxing experience is really nice, very premium, especially considering the toothbrush is not ultimately all that expensive. But then when you actually use it, you'll notice that there's a lot of tech and a lot of sort of thoughtful design here. So take the motor, for example. This has a six watt motor, three times more powerful than the standard leading toothbrush. But because you have this super soft bristles, it means that it will do a great job of cleaning your teeth without hurting your gums. On top of that, there is so much involved with the actual toothbrush itself. Down to something as simple as there's very little vibration that gets transferred to your hand, which is something that feels really nice. The fact that the toothbrush itself is not quite as tall as a lot of other options, which means it's a lot easier to travel with. The really nice little magnetic charging cable for it. On top of that, the replacement heads are very reasonably priced, unlike most toothbrushes. You're talking $10 for a three pack or $17 for a six pack. That is an outright bargain. The Life & Wave comes in three different configurations. There's the standard ABS plastic, there's an aluminum, and there's also a stainless steel. The Life & Wave is by far the best electric toothbrush I've ever used. And if you have ever used an electric toothbrush, you will know the difference as soon as you pick this thing up. So if you're interested in learning more, definitely be sure to go check out the Life & Wave in the links in the description. And huge thank you to Life & for sponsoring this video and making my mouth feel like it's never felt before. All right, my friends, let us see exactly what beautiful, beautiful items I've gotten thanks to the big G. First up, we have my SkyTech gaming PC, which was the result I got when I searched for cheap gaming PC. Now, I vaguely feel like I've heard of SkyTech in the past. Maybe I've looked at one of their systems a while ago. Um, to my knowledge, they are a somewhat standard system integrator, so they don't make any of these components, they just get some stuff that's off the shelf. Um, this was actually purchased via Best Buy. How much did I pay for it? $650. So this is like an entry level gaming PC. So at $650, my expectations are fairly low, but let's actually see what we've got here. Ooh, look at that. We've got ourselves some peripherals. Oh, well actually, it's still very cheapy, but it is the honeycomb in vogue style of mouse. What the hell? It's an RGB keyboard I got with my gaming PC. Now, wait a minute, is this thing actually good? Wait, 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 it's actually metal? Okay, well, uh, it looks a little cheapy from the front, but 
It actually has a very thin like aluminum back plate and a decent sized um, feet. Oh, ooh, ooh. Okay, that is RGB but very membrane-y. Also, have you ever seen the bottom row with the space bar is like twice the size of a normal key? It feels so strange. I will say for 650 bucks, I expect a mouse and keyboard, but this is slightly better than you might normally get. All right, so we've got ourselves a, oh my God, did they send me a poster? They quality controlled it on February 65th, 2024. So I think it was maybe February 6th or 5th. I'm not sure. Bravo, this is very, very nicely done. Continuing the good vibes, they've got nice soft foam here. And it's even got this little like carrying pouch. So obviously this is really meant to probably be thrown away, but you could, if you wanted to, Use this to protect your system later on. Behold my friends, the SkyTech gaming PC of my dreams. Okay, I'm gonna say that, I mean, obviously a cheap case, but this is all very reasonable. And look at this, very smart. Important monitor connection down here. So uh, I guarantee you that uh, nine times out of 10 when people buy a basic gaming PC and they don't know any better, what they'll do is they'll take this label off if it wasn't here. Oh, gross, ew. Ew. I think it's incredibly common for first time users to plug into these HDMI and display ports on the IO shield, not knowing that you're supposed to plug it into the graphics card. So this sticker is nice. Boy, oh boy, I wish it didn't just goop up the entire IO shield. So I'm gonna take off the actual real tempered glass side panel, which is nice and surprisingly thick. We're gonna take out the padding, which also is quite nice. So this is that sort of like heat foam. So they kind of shove it in here and it sort of expands itself out and there we go. So we got this one and we have some more. Oh, okay, these cables are gross. That, oh, okay, that's. Let's take a look at what we're working with here. So we have a couple of fans, which I assume are RGB in the front, as well as one in the back. We have a Game DS um, CPU cooler, which actually I would say is kind of overkill because I believe, was this an, uh, this is an i5 or was this an i3? i3. So yes, the i3 12100F. That is quite a low end CPU. I'll be real with you, this CPU cooler is a little bit overkill, but it also probably cost them like marginally more than the stock cooler, so that's fine. We've also got a PNY GTX 1650, which is not a high-end graphics card at all, but for a first-time builder, that's fine. All right, we've got an Asus motherboard. Now it is a micro ATX board, a P1 650. <laughs> so this should be an 80 plus gold, 650 watt power supply. Interesting. So we do have 16 gigs of 3200 mega transfer RAM, which is nice. Wow. Actually, look at that cable management. The yellow cable ties are choice, but honestly, I don't hate it at all. That is surprising. No, I'm not going to say surprising, but that is just straight clean, man. SkyTech, two thumbs up, my dudes. So this PC looks quite good at first glance. However, we didn't buy just a PC. Oh no, my friends. I also need a monitor. This one was very simple. I typed in the word gaming monitor and this is what I got. The Kurui business display. This was a $70 monitor that I purchased from amazon.com via Google. Now, this actually seemed quite decent at first glance. Uh, I think the spec of this was like, it was 1080p and I think it was at what, 90 or 100 Hertz or something. Like it wasn't bad for uh, an entry level gaming monitor. I'm feeling good, man. I was kind of expecting a lot of these recommendations to be just kind of generic ad garbage. And while I believe pretty much every item that I purchased here was an ad, they do actually seem to have some quality behind them. Let me get this monitor. Oh, it's so light. It is weighs absolutely nothing. So I have set up the SkyTech and I still have nothing but good things to say about it. So the RGB implementation actually, I think looks pretty nice. I think most people will appreciate the fact that this looks probably a little more expensive than it really is. As an entry level system, completely built, you know, turnkey ready to go for $650, it's not bad. And same thing kind of goes with this mouse and keyboard. It's also not too terrible. You try to tell me that I'm gonna use the stock keyboard? How lovely it is, but oh no, 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 my friends, because I had to buy a gaming keyboard. And by a gaming keyboard, I mean a half a keyboard, um, Cause you know, gamers only use half the keys. So the advantage with this is that this is going to be a mechanical half keyboard. Now, while it sounds a little bit silly, there is certainly a use for this. Uh, people who play MMOs, people especially want to have your, your keyboard and your mouse really close together. This actually can be helpful. It's the Diddy, the Diddy. 
The Diddy. Um, how much did I pay for my uh, my my gaming key keyboard? Forty dollars mm -hmm. for the nice Diddy. I will say forty dollars uh, is actually not a great deal. You can get a low end mechanical full size keyboard for 30, 40 bucks pretty easily. But the person who buys this gaming keyboard doesn't want to type on the the J, K, and L keys. Oh no, who needs a J or a K or an L? We only use words that use uh, quirt, asdaf, and quistibib. And mm, wait, why is NP on the bottom? What? Wait. So we've got ourselves a very cheapy um, wrist dressed and the actual keyboard itself. So it is magnetic, which is nice. So you get yourself a couple of programmable macro keys as well as some on top. Um, we have F1234 and then we have a few of our keys, but not that many. And also these huge, very nice feeling buttons. I will say I'm not massively impressed with this. Um, it feels fine, it does have mechanical keys, and it also has, what the? It has extra switches? What? Why would you get extra switches? Okay, that's actually kind of cool. Dust proof browns, so they're Cheeto approved. Chester's got nothing on you, my gamer friends. I got a little de decent spend, maybe? I will say that this mouse specifically is actually really quite decent for something that was just included with our system, but, we had to purchase a cheap gaming mouse, thanks to our friends at Google. This is the Bengu gaming mouse, and it is the ultimate RGB edition. But uh, how much did I pay for my Bengu? Well, you know how you were so excited for a nice $3 mouse that was included? Well, yeah. this one was nine, so this should be three times better, right? I am pretty sure that the mouse that came with the system is gonna be better than this. But let's take a look, shall we? For nine bucks, we've got ourselves a braided cable, and oh, good lord, that colorful glare gaming mouse, it looks bad. It's just like cheapy 9,000. Ooh, ooh, mmm, that smells like lead. Let's plug in the mouse. Let's see what this RGB looks like. Are you ready? Bingo! Oh, that's lame. That's so lame. <laughs> that's it. Uh, Look at these two mice. Oh, oh, no, no, it's doing stuff. It's cycling. I guess. It's got a nice little gradient. But um, why is it like, you can see there's like individual LEDs inside and it's like they're just turning on and off. Like this looks so much better. And then I'm also gonna plug in my Red Dragon and let's see what we got. Now, it actually has USB-C plus a USB-A port. I assume that you could probably buy like a secondary half of this keyboard if you wanted to. Um, but the way we're gonna use this setup is we're gonna use the Red Dragon plus the actual real keyboard since I need to type with the other keys sometimes. So this is gonna get janky real quick. Uh, yeah, okay, that actually tracks decently. So we've got ourselves the Red Dragon. Oh, you know what though, it's very like hollow. Can you hear that? If you are the kind of person who's buying this, the main advantage is that you can actually get your hands a lot closer together, right? So I can be gaming like this, as opposed to having to spread my hands out like this so that I can get that optimal gaming experience. So that's not an intro key, the G1. No, it opens up, Bing was help, get, get help. Oh, it's F1. Huh. Oh, okay. Which is weird, because they also have the macro keys too. Wait, I'll help you out. <laughs> Thank you. I feel like now I am prepared to do battle on the virtual steps oh. of Fortnite. Now, as you can see, this setup is looking incredibly professional. We've got a $650 gaming PC, our dual keyboards, dual mice, and what I will say is actually a very nice display that runs at 100 hertz for only 70 bucks. Well, we're gonna need an RGB microphone. Now, this is the MERSD professional microphone. You can tell it's professional because it says the word professional on it. How much did I pay for my MERSD professional microphone? $20. There are a lot of very cheap USB microphones that sound awful. You cannot tell the difference, right? So looking at this, even though it's a little guy, there are very nice little mics that can be small. Like that shouldn't be the barrier to entry. Oh, wow. Actually, that RGB is not bad. That's not bad. It's like rotating. But I actually say the capsule looks kind of cool. So this is a test. Oh, that's really loud. This is a test of the MERSD. Let me see. Can I turn down volume down? Oh, that sounds, sounds like it's clipping. It sounds like it's clipping even though I'm not because I've got the volume super low. Yeah. Yeah, okay, here's the thing. I don't need to listen anymore. Yeah, this is not good. This thing sucks. <sighs> so we're going to try Fortnite, which I think is a great game to test this setup with. Um, so 
it will run it up to 100 hertz. Um, so right now in Fortnite, um, well, I'm getting seven. So that's maybe not great. I maybe turn my settings up a little too high. I'm swinging between one and, or like five and like 70 FPS. Let me actually hit the ground. Now I could turn my settings down farther and I probably should, but that is, yes, yeah, you look right there. It stutters big time. That is one of the main problems with a setup like this. I gotta say though, this monitor is actually surprisingly solid. So 24 inch 1080p, I mean, it's certainly not like a super, you know, fancy panel. It's not like, you know, it's TN. It's kind of got like, okay, average color and whatnot, but there's nothing that's really egregiously wrong with it. The brightness is pretty solid. And on top of that, running at hundred Hertz is very solid for this kind of price point. Cause you can definitely notice a major jump in fluidity going from 60 to hundred. Okay. For the gaming PC part of this video, I've got to say I'm kind of impressed. Hang on. I got, I got this guy up one second. Ho, 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 ho. When I searched the word gaming, I didn't quite have this, the Meta Quest 2 in mind, but it's actually a pretty good deal. While the Quest 3 is $500 and the Apple Vision Pro is $3,500, this was available for a mere $250. That's actually a pretty good deal because for a while the Quest 2 had actually gone up in price, but now that the Quest 3 is out, these are getting cleared out, although they are still on sale. And I will say that this is actually not a dramatically worse experience than the Quest 3. Now it's certainly the budget version, but a lot of the improvements that have come to the Quest 3 have also come to the Quest 2. So I'm super hotting right now, which if I haven't done super hot in a while. Punch through. Punch him in the nuts, in case you're curious. Super hot, the game of punching dudes in the nuts. Nuts, 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 nuts! Nuts, nuts, nuts! I like the Quest a lot, and the Quest 3 specifically might be my favorite VR headset out. I mean, the Apple Vision is obviously an incredible technical marvel, but we're talking about something which is so expensive, it almost isn't even worth sort of being in the same conversation as something like this, which, look, if you've never experienced VR, at $250, this is a great entry point. This is a little bit more accurate to what I'm actually seeing. So I'm looking at like this big room and yada, yada, yada. Um, but yeah, so I guess, hi Austin, what the, why is my, wow, I'm looking at myself in the mirror, this is, wow. Why are you doing that? Cause I'm looking at myself in the mirror and my hands are just, you're kind of doing like the hotline bling? Like what is that? So when I searched for, Cheap gaming console, a DK Oldies Game Boy Advance is again, not really what I expected. Um, but let's take a look. Okay, so looking at this, it has the film on the front, which makes me think that it likely was a screen replacement. This would make sense, it says remove film, so I'll take that off. Um, oh yeah, it's got like some weird chrominess on the Game Boy Advance logo, but it's a very clean screen lens at the very least. This does look like an original casing. It's got like some minor scuffs and everything, but it's in good shape. There's no DK Oldies warranty void sticker in here. Wow, that's impressive. After we and a bunch of other people complain about it enough, I think DK Oldies stopped putting the warranty like void stickers or whatever on it. So good job, DK Oldies. I said it with a straight face. And, uh, early hat on. Okay, and how much did I pay for this cheap gaming console via the big G? $119.99. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it's hard for me to justify someone spending uh, any money on a Game Boy Advance. If I was going to buy a moddable Game Boy, I would probably try to find something that's in a little bit rougher condition because I would want to swap out the screen with something that has you know, some kind of backlight. Ideally, put some kind of rechargeable battery in here to give me some extra like sort of longevity. It just feels like it probably needs to be cleaned, which I'll say, having looked at many DK Oldies consoles in the past, the level of uh, care and attention that's gone into the inside of this could have just been a quick little dust up and putting a couple new stickers on it. I don't know. Um, it's totally fine. I think it would be overpriced for it, but I guess technically this is a cheap game console. It just depends on your definition of cheap. Although, well, maybe your expectation of game consoles well. <laughs> when you type the words gaming gadget into Google, what comes to mind? A mouse, a weird keyboard, a controller perhaps, or a whole fucking ROG ally, my dude. What? This is a gaming gadget. Now, I will say that Google at least gave me the much cheaper version of the Ally. So the normal version of the Ally with the Z1 Extreme costs $700, a lot of money. But this 
is the Z1, which originally cost 600, but was on sale at Best Buy for 400 bucks. And I will tell you that at $400, this is a whole lot more interesting because the main difference between the two consoles is that the Z1 Extreme is much more powerful. And originally a hundred dollar difference is not worth it. But at $400, I mean, this is like base Steam Deck levels. There's a shot, this actually might be the best item of the video. You do have some quite nice RGB around the thumbsticks, as well as two front firing speakers. Um, the bezels are a little bit chunky, but not too bad. And I actually like the way they've done the grips. It's a little bit flat, so you don't have like something compared to something like a Steam Deck, which has like a very deep grip. This is a little bit shallow, but you do have the rear triggers. You do have what I would say is like a relatively comfortable experience, and it's not crazy heavy. Um, on top, you also have not only a USB-C, but you also have their XG mobile port, which I find that almost no one would actually use, but technically you can use this to connect to an external GPU to get a lot more performance. The downside there is just simply the fact that that is gonna probably be more expensive than the ROG Ally itself. So hopping into a game of Forza Horizon 5, admittedly, while this is not the newest, most demanding game in the world, with some pretty simple optimization, I'm getting 1080p low settings at about 60 to 70 FPS. Now I am taking advantage of FSR here, but Actually, this is kind of better than I thought. While I would be getting more performance using the regular ROG Ally, I'm actually getting a very usable one. Like this does not feel like it is a essentially half the price, or at least it feels like it shouldn't be half the price. And it's because it normally isn't. This is normally a $600 handheld. And the fact that it is at least right now available for 400 bucks, shout out Google for telling me because I had no idea. Now I do have a bunch of additional settings and I will tell you what, while I've killed 12% of battery in turbo mode in like 10 minutes, um, this ROG Ally software has actually gotten significantly better than the last time I used it. Google, you know, I gotta say something. I didn't even know that this was available for 400 bucks, so maybe there's something too. actually just blindly Googling things. You maybe shouldn't just immediately hit the checkout button every time you see the first ad that pops up, but I gotta say, I've actually found some things in this video that I was not expecting. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring -a -ling that ding -a ling button. If you excuse me, I'm gonna go bang how to get more views on my YouTube videos. Oh, clickbait! I need to clickbait more, duh!